Hi, thanks for joining me. So today I want to try something a little different. Uh, as you can see, I have Crunchyroll up here. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about the new anime season. Uh, it's always a little bittersweet because you don't get to you know, keep going with some of the, the good shows from the previous season. But, um, but it's fun because there's a lot of cool new stuff. So the first one that I'm checking out here is called Engaged to the Unidentified. And the premise reminds me of uh, Ranma Nibu Noichi, uh, Ranma One Half, uh, where you basically have this this girl. There are these two sisters, and it turns out the youngest one uh, has been engaged by her family to a boy, um, you know, from another family that they're friends with, and so she turns uh, 16, which I guess is the the marriageable age. Uh, in Japan, as you know, it is in in some states, and you know, depending on on where you are here in the U.S., and um, so she basically has her, uh, unbeknownst to her fiance, move in with uh, her soon to possibly be sister-in-law, who's this girl here, and um, you know, hijinks ensue. Um, some interesting stuff in this so far. They haven't really played up the the romantic comedy of it a lot. Um, a lot of it more has to do with the the younger sister-in-law and the older sister. Um, so it's pretty fun so far, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that series goes. Definitely one of my favorites uh, this season. Uh, certainly I'm keeping up with Kill the Kill. Uh, I took a little bit of a break when we switched seasons, but uh, watched the latest episode or two, and that is continuing to be good. <laughs> Uh, another one that I tried out this season, uh, just a few episodes, this is Nisei Koi. Um, kind of like Nisei Mono, it's it's like fake love. So with this one, uh, honestly, the, the premise started off, it was a little cliched for me. You have this, this guy, like, I guess this girl gave him a locket and she's keeping the key so he's he's basically hanging on to this um this locket uh, in hopes that he'll run into this girl again it turns out also that he's uh, a son of like a yakuza family so this rival gang starts kind of encroaching on their turf so the you know the heads of the families decide that the best way to keep this from escalating is to get their their two um, you know, youngest to start dating each other so that everybody will kind of calm down. It's kind of a reverse uh, Romeo and Juliet. So these these two are uh, forced to pretend that they're going out, hence the uh, the fake love. And yet, you know, you know this guy is, uh, you know, has this other girl that he's, he's hoping to meet. So um, honestly, the, the first episode of that didn't really hit me over the head, but it's animated by Shaft, and the opening song is, is by Claris, like the, I think, opening and ending, maybe. So, um, those two things alone kind of had me going. I, you know, I definitely shouldn't give up on this after one episode. It's good enough that I wanted to keep going, so, uh, definitely interested in watching more Nisekoi. Um, <laughs> strangely enough here, we have two shows, uh, involving Oda Nobunaga. I don't quite know how that happened, but they, they both look, you know, not historical in any way. They're, they're both pretty ridiculous. In fact, the one that I started with is Nobunagan. It basically follows a high school girl who, like, she has the genetic memories of uh, Oda Nobunaga. And, you know, it has some kind of typical stuff. Like, she's actually a military otaku, and, you know, she's kind of likes being on her own and you know doesn't really hang out with the popular people but this popular girl kind of likes her you know kind of wants to be friends with her so um you know that's kind of cute you get this whole kind of high school drama thing going on and then um but then of course like these these aliens from the the ocean they, they like had come from a different planet and evolved in the ocean over thousands of years and they're starting to come out and attack people um and you know, they need to be thwarted by these people with the genetic memories of a bunch of historical figures and these weird superpowers to fight them. It's it's just off the wall. Um, so I'm enjoying that a lot so far. I, you know, no idea if this will be able to keep up, uh, you know, my interest or, or really be good, but uh, it definitely has a lot of potential. So I'm, uh, I'm going to be enjoying uh, keeping up with that one. Um, 
you know, another thing that we see more these days is these short series. They're almost like webisodes. Um, sometimes it's a pretty good format for certain things. Um, one of those is Onechan Gakita, which is, um, you know, like my, my sister is, is here. <laughs> sister has arrived. Um, and it's kind of like Marmalade Boy, um, just sort of that typical, well, our parents got remarried and now I've suddenly got a, a step uh, sister or brother kind of a thing. But uh, in this one, it's really that this uh, this sister is like a stalker. She like knows everything about this boy and like wants to live in his room and stuff. It's it's a pretty funny premise actually. Um, you know, with only about three minutes of actual animation to execute it. You know, so far it's it's been um, it's been fine. I've only watched one episode, I think, so I wanna I wanna catch up on those. Um, but that that could be interesting. Um, Pupa is another one of those short series that uh, I haven't actually started, but I, I definitely want to check it out. Um, I guess in keeping with the sister theme, in fact, uh, One Changa Kita, and um, this one is recently my sister is unusual, and I won't try to remember the uh, the Japanese name. You you have a, a stepsister suddenly with this main character, this guy, and the thing is though, she keeps being possessed by this ghost that has a crush on her new brother. And she doesn't really like her new brother and hasn't, you know, they haven't warmed up to each other. So she's like really cold to him and then she'll get possessed by this ghost and be like really friendly with him. So that premise on its own is pretty interesting, but the execution I don't I don't know how like comfortable and, and how much I really enjoy like watching it. Uh, so starting with that relatively good premise, then you also add that this ghost like keeps just doing sexually inappropriate things to this girl and additionally like possessing her body and like making her do things that she doesn't want to do and she's also like saddled her with this chastity belt um it's just like it's a little wacky um it, to the point where i don't really know if i'm gonna keep watching this Next up is Sakura Trick, uh, and I think I've also only watched the first episode of this one, and I don't quite know what to make of it yet. Um, it's it's kind of a, a Yuri show. You have this girl who is, uh, the, these two girls that are really good friends, and they're just starting high school, and um, so the the one girl starts getting really jealous when this other girl, you know, is making friends, and um, stuff like that. So she's like, oh, you know, we, we need to do something that's, that's special just between the two of us. So we've got something that, you know, that n nobody else has. So, um, so they decide to kiss and it's, it's just funny. Cause like the, the one girl is really into it. And you know, the other girl, you're kind of like, well, you know, how, how does she feel? And, um, so I don't quite know what direction they're going with this, if it's kind of dramatic or kind of goofy. It's mostly been goofy so far. So, you know, that's kind of a good sign. Um, and, you know, if they kind of mix that up with the comedy and the drama, that'll be pretty good. But, um, you know, I haven't, I haven't added that one to my queue yet. I'm, I'm just keeping an eye on it. Um, next up, we've got uh, Seitokai Yakuin Domo. And this one... Share something with the other ones, I guess, just in terms of being kind of a goofy high school comedy um, that's also just kind of over the top with ridiculous, like, sexual jokes and innuendo and stuff like that. But the, the difference with this one, um, like, it started off with the, like, you see this plane flying over America and, you know, you, you see these people, they're just they're behaving pretty inappropriately, you know, it's just like these dirty jokes, kind of, and I'm like, okay, I mean, is that what they think of America? You know, pe people get impressions of certain places from certain things that might not be, you know, the, the way things always are, but um, then you get into the story when you're at the high school, and it's more like they, they just keep going with that. You know, they're introducing all these characters, but it's just kind of like dirty joke after dirty joke. And uh, honestly, once I once I got my head around that and understood, like, that's the premise of the show, um, it cracks me up 
so much each episode. I I have not laughed this much at a an anime I think in in quite some time. Um, so I'm really enjoying uh, this show. It's um it's really quite funny, and uh, you know if you like that kind of thing, I would say I would say check it out. You know if you don't mind some some dirty jokes. They they you know they bleep out words and things like that, but it's still it's not. I mean I wouldn't say it's like kid appropriate material, but it's it's good stuff. Um, Next up is uh, Sony Ani, or uh, the Super Sonico, the animation. And um, this is one that, you know, I, I don't know much about the character Super Sonico. I, I really, I think she's just a mascot character. Uh, I think for 5PB, um, kind of in, in keeping with their music theme, um, she's, you know, she's sort of this voluptuous, like, music girl. You know, she's got the headphones on all the time. She just looks like kind of that young young person into music and um so i didn't really know what to expect but i have to say probably out of all the stuff i've watched this season so far this is my favorite show and it it all just comes down to one thing where the the character that they have like she's really she's really earnest um she's really innocent and um and just really hard working I mean, she's also living this high school fantasy life, too. I think she's involved in all of these kind of glamour professions that, um, you know, it's kind of high school dream paradise. You know, she's a model. I think she lives on her own. Um, she's going to co college, and she, um, you know, is in a band and stuff. And just how, like, earnest and innocent she is um, is the charm of the show. The show has really charmed me. Um, and I'm enjoying it a lot, so I definitely recommend uh, Super Sonico, the animation. Um, some other stuff here. Um, Tonari no Seki-kun. This is another one that is a short series, and I've enjoyed this a lot so far. Um, it's really easy to understand. You basically have this girl here, and uh, Seki-kun, who uh, sits next to her, and he is always doing something um, completely unrelated to class, um, you know, the kind of thing that would get him suspended or expelled, or, I mean, unlike some of these other shows, nothing dirty, but he's just, like, he's goofing off hardcore in class. So the, the whole thing is, you know, I can tell each episode, it's just going to be like, what crazy thing is Seki-kun going to be doing this time? And, you know, how is this girl going to react to it? Kind of both being afraid that the teacher's going to find out, or getting caught up in like the the you know what he's doing and maybe trying to help him out and uh it's it's cute like it's like i said it's very easy to understand uh it's easy to watch and um and it's fun um i checked out the first episode of wake up girls it seems like about a group of girls that um you know they're kind of like trying to be idol singers you know kind of stars with a like a talent agency and um it didn't really grab me. Uh, I might try out some more and see how it is, um, but you know that's that's basically it. Um, there are some things here. Uh, Wizard Barristers seems to be creating some buzz, so I definitely want to check that out. Um, you know, a couple other things here. Probably this World Conquest uh, Conquest uh, Zvezda plot. Um, I might take a look at uh there's some other things too i mean i've watched some sword art online it wasn't really my thing i didn't, didn't really like the characters um i gave that one a good chance too i, I got pretty far into it uh, you know naruto of course i've watched before is really good but it just you know those shonen shows they go on for a long time um kuroko's basketball i might check out i'm not really into sports anime all that much but it's been so popular um, that I'm, I'm, you know, I feel like I'm kind of obligated to, uh, to at least have, have given it a chance and, you know, kind of know what people are talking about. And, um, you know, Folktales from Japan, I've also been watching. I think I, I petered out around episode 30, maybe something like that. It's got 93 episodes, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's gone on for quite some time, and it's, it's pretty fun if you want to learn about, you know, some folktales, uh, and, and fairy tales and stuff from another country. Um, so anyway, that's that's my stuff. Uh, I've been watching the second season of Genshiken also, and maybe I'll talk about that a little bit more. But I just wanted to share with you guys today, um, you know, some of my opinions on this stuff. Um, I hope this has been fun, and I will definitely get back to talking more about some video games here shortly. So thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll join me again. 
Hi, so uh, here's just a little bonus. Um, I just wanted to talk about Genshiken for a brief moment. Um, I just finished up the, like, Genshiken the Second, I guess it was called, um, which is, it's already had, like, 24 episodes, I guess, and this adds another 12 to it, um, about this group, um, this college club of you know, just geeky people, it's like, you have, you know, people that are into cosplay, um, you've got, like, people that are drawing, you know, doujinshi and becoming professional manga artists, and, um, you know, just socially awkward, inept, um, creative, interesting people, um, in this, in this club, and it's just a, you know, it's a manga and anime series about that. I just wanted to show these off, I guess, and, uh, maybe just talk a little bit about this series, um, just because it, you know, it means a lot to me, I think it, uh, it's, it's maybe one of the first, like, otaku culture shows to really get popular, or, you know, to, to, for people to notice here, you know, this season was really good, there was some dramatic moments to it, um, you know, a lot of stuff with some of the old characters, plus new people have, that have been joining the club, um, you know, a lot of people have graduated, uh, Madarame, um, appears in it quite a bit, and, you know, you have this new, uh, character who cross-dresses, it's like a guy, and he dresses as a girl just for the club, and it's funny, like, a lot of this stuff kind of revolves around him, but there's also, like, there's Fujoshi, um, one of the girls is, like, a professional manga artist now, and Sasahata is working as an editor, so, um, they're talking, and they're actually going out, and it's, it's really fun, and I think it just, it helps me to, to just watch a show like that, like, where I feel such a connection to the characters, um, it's just always fun and interesting for me, so anyway, these, um, you know, just, I just have a few figurines, um, uh, several of these were given to me by my friends, and, um, you know, it's like the characters cosplaying, um, so some scenes that are, uh, pretty memorable from the, the first season, and, um, up here I also have, uh, if you can see in the back there, kind of behind Taki and the Kaon figures, those are all the uh, Kuchibiki Unbalance figures, which is the uh, series that everybody was watching in the first season. Um, I don't think the show is uh, is running when you get to the uh, Genshi Kenley second, but um, anyway, I just wanted to talk about it and show off my figurines and stuff. I thought you guys might... Uh, get a kick out of seeing those. I don't have the complete set of this. It was a little crazy too. They did these unpainted ones and the, the colored ones and it's just, uh, I didn't get all of those, but those are some of the random packs, you know, the figures that you can get in the, the blind boxes. Um, but, uh, anyway, a lot of fun with Genshiken. If, you know, if you're an otaku, if you identify with that culture at all or whatever, you, uh, you guys might want to check it out. I definitely have the, um, the first season of the, uh, series on DVD, and, uh, you know, I definitely, I've been meaning to get the, the rest of it, um, I should just pick that up here one of these days, but, um, just wanted to share that with you guys, uh, hope that you, uh, enjoy this, <laughs> and, uh, I'll catch you, catch you again next time.